Learning to become a speed cuber can be very overwhelming as there's so much knowledge and it's hard to know how to approach this. For the CFOP method, the four main steps are the cross, F2L, OLL, and PLO. And to make the transition easier, there are beginner versions of these steps. This doesn't just apply to CFOP. If you look at a method like Roo, it's very similar, but this video will be focused on CFOP. Of course, you could learn these in any order you want and you'll end up in the same place. I learned in a really stupid order and I'm fine, so don't worry too much about sticking to any order. But having all this is overwhelming and it's good to have at least somewhat of a structure that you can stick to if you're unsure. In this video, I'll go over an order of steps that I recommend and also show you the basic idea Idea of what each of these steps are if you've never seen them. The first thing I recommend learning is beginner F2L. After you make the cross and flip the cube over, in the beginner method you would insert a corner into the first layer and then an edge into the second layer once your first layer is done. But with F2L you could do those at the same time and that would look like this. The basic idea for how this works is there are a few ways of putting this corner in here but we'll just look at one of them and that is if you put it in like this. When I do that, pay attention to the edge here, how it goes away and a different edge replaces it. So the edge that came in with it, look where it came from, it came from right here. So if we just make sure that the correct edge, the orange green that belongs here, is the one over here, then they will go in together. So in this case, I can add a few moves to make sure the edge ends up here. And then when I insert this corner normally now, I get them together. So the concept is not too bad, but to be able to actually use this in solves is very hard, which is why I recommend learning it first, because you need the most amount of time to get used to this. After this, you can start doing cross on the bottom. If you make the cross on top, it's easier to see the cross, but then you have to flip the cube over and it's faster to make it on the bottom. Making the cross efficiently can get pretty complicated if you've never done this before, so I'll just show you some of the most basic ideas to help you with cross on bottom. So first, if you have a piece like red here, what you can do instead of attaching it to its center and then moving it in, what you can do is just immediately put it into the cross and then align it to the center afterwards. Here we have orange already ready to go, and then we have blue. Again, instead of moving it out and then putting it to blue, what we can do is just get the blue spot, which it's right here. We can get that one right over here, then put blue in that spot and move this all back. Then another important idea is if you have this on top in a way where if you just put it in, it would be flipped, then you can move it to the side and do R prime F R. Once you can do the cross on the bottom the way I've shown, one piece at a time, you can gradually start to pick up more tricks from the videos that I have. Next, I recommend learning beginner OLL and beginner PLL. Beginner OLL uses two steps to make the top all the same color. The first one would just make the cross, and the second step would finish off the corners. Beginner PLL uses two steps to solve the rest. The first step would solve all of the corner pieces, so these two right now can be solved, and these two are not. So you would do one algorithm that solves those. And then you would do one more algorithm that solves all of the edges. This is where a lot of newer cubers get discouraged. Learning algorithms is not that fun. That's kind of true at first, but if you didn't learn algorithms, you wouldn't be able to do stuff like this. So at least to spectators, the coolest part about cubing is the algorithms. So learn them. Once you finish learning beginner CFOP, you can either go for advanced F2L or full PLL. The main idea for advanced F2L is saving one step from beginner F2L. It's for cases like this where an edge or corner is in the wrong slot and the other one is on top. For beginner F2L, this is not covered. You just take the piece out, put them both on top, and then work with whatever you have here to start pairing them. With advanced F2L, the first thing you do always pairs them up, which means even just taking something out to the top, you have to do it in a different way that ends up pairing them up to be inserted right away. Then there's full PLL, which solves everything after OLL in just one step. You have to learn 21 algorithms for this, but that includes the six beginner algorithms, so it's only 15 more, and a lot of them are very similar to each other. So for example, this one. For advanced F2L and full PLL, I recommend learning a bit of both and kind of going back and forth between the two because it's hard to learn either of these all at once. These are both difficult steps to conquer, so take them both slowly. After this, or all throughout learning this, you can work on making your cross more efficient. For getting the cross done in as few moves as possible, there are a lot of different little tricks you have to learn. The reason I don't recommend going into this right away is because a lot of little patterns you wouldn't see if you were too new to this. But once you've been doing cross on the bottom for long enough, then a lot of these will be like, yeah, I've seen that before, and now I know a way to solve it. 
So I'll just show you one example cross with some of the tricks you could use. Here I have orange and red can go right here, but orange is in the way. So I would move orange to the opposite side because red and orange belong on opposite sides, then put red in like this. But before I do that, I notice that blue and red go like from left to right is blue red and here's blue red. So I can put blue on top of red like this and get them in together so that they are in the correct order. Notice how I haven't aligned anything in the cross to be solved because I don't need to, I can save that for the last move. Lastly, I have green set up right here, which I can put into the back and then I can align the cross at the end and all of them are in the right spot. This is the type of thing that is very hard to pick up just from doing normal solves. You have to do a lot of dedicated practice to just the cross, but if you put in enough work, you'll find that making an efficient cross, you can kind of start doing it every time versus F2L, OLL, PLL, those steps are actually much harder to get good at. And of course, the last step is to learn full OLL, and I probably don't need to show you what that is. Now that's not the end, as just learning the steps to solve the cube is actually not enough, and if I were to make this more realistic, full OLL would not be here yet. In fact, I'd throw in a lot of little things that you have to know, which are equally as important as all of these steps. The first thing is, as you learn advanced F2L and full PLL, you should also learn some advanced finger tricks. The most important advanced finger tricks to learn are U2 flicks with either of your hands and also doing D moves with either of your hands. And then the one finger trick that people tend to underestimate at this level is this finger trick. I know it feels really awkward at first, but it's one of the most important ones. Take this advanced F2L case for example. If I were to do this in a beginner finger trick way, then I would do it like this. Notice how there were two regrips in there, and a regrip is actually slower than one move because I can do this slower than I can do this. So by using basic finger tricks forcing me to regrip twice here, it's actually like I have a less efficient F2L. So saving moves in F2L is not all, you have to save regrips as well. So that's where this finger trick comes in. You move your hand up, then do this index finger move while your thumb is still on top. And then insert like this, and in total there's no regrips. So the beginner way, and the advanced way. And I'm sure you can see how the same idea applies to all parts of your solve like PLL. So if I were to do this algorithm like this, it saves me the regrip in the beginning by letting me keep my thumbs on front. But if I were to start like this, that would be a regrip to start. Then before learning full OLL, you'll actually find that full OLL is one of the less important things here. Before learning that, I recommend getting started on F2L look ahead. Before learning F12 look ahead, you have to be very fluent at your current F12 cases, so good at them that you don't even have to think about them. And the reason for that will become very obvious. So here's an F2L pair. And if you're a beginner at this, you would think line up the edge, put the corner on top and insert into the back. But once you're so good at F2L well that this is just muscle memory, all you'll think is, oh, that's this. And if you're at that point, then there's no need to look at this anymore. You already know how to solve it. So then you can start looking at the next thing, which for example, is these two. I already know how to solve these two. So right afterwards, I can go into this, set them up, pair it, and oh, I see these. So I'll go into that right away afterwards. There are so many little aspects to look ahead involving prediction and being able to set things up in a way where it's easier to look at the next thing. So I'll leave that here for now, but I have a ton of videos on look ahead if you want to explore more. Keep in mind that look ahead does not work unless you are already very fluent with how to solve your F2L cases. You can't think about what you're solving as you think about the next thing. You have to pick one. So make sure you keep that in mind because if you try to start doing look ahead before you're very fluent at all your cases, then it will probably just slow down your progress. Next, I'll mention a few things that you can look forward to after full OLL. I won't go too far into this because if you're actually at the step, you'll probably have some idea of what these are already. But just some things to look out for is learning some more algorithm sets for easier cases like winter variation, COLL, or VLS. You can learn some of these before OLL if you want, but don't learn too many of them as OLL is more important. Then there's optimizing your OLL and PLL algorithms, whether it's finger tricks or just learning a new algorithm because you didn't like the one you first picked. That's completely normal and that's why I recommend learning any algorithm before learning the right algorithm because a lot of times you end up picking one you don't like anyway, so there's no point in thinking about it too much in the beginning. And then there's reducing the pause between cross and F2L, which is called cross to F2L transition or predicting first pair. Don't even think about this until you can plan your entire cross plus good finger tricks for it during 15 seconds of inspection. This is at least two, maybe three times as hard and is impossible if you don't have a lot of experience already. So that's about it. I hope I provided you with a good roadmap if you're trying to learn speed cubing. Remember, you do not have to strictly follow this order as if you're trying your fastest to improve, having fun and being motivated is a huge part of it. You can follow this roadmap if you're unsure, but remember to follow your heart. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.